How many messes will I make this time? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, soapy friends. It's Steph from Micahs and More. Here's my inspiration pick for my new soap, Black Sea. Let's make soap. To get a nice deep blue, I'm using Magic Blue Mica. I'm mixing it in a little bit of my reserved oils. This is Pitch Black Mica. It's very dark, but has a little bit of sheen to it. This is a mix of white satin mica and stellar white mica. I wanted it to have a nice white color but also added sparkle. And here are my melted oils. They got a bit cold on me while I dealt with the lighting situation for my camera, but stirring loosened it back up. I add my lye water, which has sugar, sodium lactate, and tussa silk already mixed in. The oils that I use are lard, coconut, olive pomace, cocoa butter, and shea butter. As I use the stick blender, I notice that it gets very thick. This is because of the temperature that I started with. But I had to make sure it was all mixed in, so I just stick blended as little as possible. Since I'm only mixing a one pound batch for this, I'm using my small spoonula. I was very relieved that as I stirred, the batter got more fluid. And now I'll add the Black Sea fragrance oil. It has notes of plum, clove, ozone, cardamom seed, floral, vanilla, and amber. Luckily, adding the fragrance oil made the batter even more fluid, so now I was back to exactly where I wanted it to be. For the Magic Blue Mica, I'm using one teaspoon of mica in one cup of soap. You could use less, it really just depends on what look you'd like. For the Pitch Black Mica, I do recommend a one teaspoon per one cup of soap to get the color that it looks dry. Otherwise, if you dilute it more, it will look gray. I set aside a few ounces so that I can see how the fragrance oil will affect the color of the soap and I add the whites into the remaining batter. Here's my DIY corrugated plastic mold. If you'd like to see the tutorial on this, I'll add it to the description box. Let's get this soap in the mold. And let's see how much of a mess I could make. That's mess number one. After a bit of cleanup, I tried again with the next color. I really like how you can see the stellar white sparkling as I pour it. And then I add the magic blue. My original design for this part was to have it tilted so that all of the soap would pull at one end and then as I set it flat, it would make a neat design. Well, my sides weren't high enough to do that, so there really was no design to be seen, so I had to move on to plan B. This is the plain soap that I'm using as a color control for the fragrance oil. I decided to turn it so that I could do a kiss pour. That's when you pour so that the streams touch before they pour into the mold. 
or the canvas when you're doing acrylic painting. I used a toothpick to make a little bit of a design before I moved on to my big plan. And now for the fun part. It gets a little messy, but I learn how to control it pretty soon. In acrylic painting, this is called the Dutch pour technique, where you use air by a straw or even a hairdryer to blow the paint, or in my case, soap, where you want it to go. I think I've only seen one other soaper do this on YouTube videos. That was a lot of fun, but just like other designs, it's hard to know when to quit. But I finally did, and I cleaned up the edges with a toothpick. And now for the final decoration. This is sea salt that I mixed in a little bit of Stellar White Mica. I'll make lines going across and they will end up in the center of each bar. One last look before I put this one to bed. I'll put it in a box and under a blanket for about 24 hours. The next day, I started to unmold it. What I really didn't pay attention to was how tacky it was, but I found out really quickly that it was not ready. Pay attention to your soap and don't do what I did or you'll have another mess on your hands. The soap sticking was my first clue, and then of course it left fingerprints and it didn't really want to come out of the mold. That's a sure sign that your soap isn't ready. What you should do at this point is set it down, walk away, and try it later or even the next day. At 
this point I realized I'd made a big mistake and I set it down and I did leave it alone, but not before I'd made a mess out of my soap. The next day the soap is much more set up and I use a pastry cutter and a toothpick to mark where I need to make the cuts. And here are the final soap picks. I hope you enjoyed the video of me trying out these various techniques and generally just making a mess. It was still a lot of fun and it's always good to try something new. like a sample of this soap, you can get one when you place an order in my online store, micasandmore.com. And you can share what you make in my Facebook group, Steps Micas and More. Thanks for watching!